quick. Hello, everyone. I'm Fred Niehaus. How are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about access points. You know, I'm going to give you a couple updates. Take a look here. If you look at what happened in this whole Wi-Fi stuff, it starts over here, Wi-Fi 1 in 1999, .11D. I come from over here where it was .11 nothing. <laughs> we took a barcode reader, walkie-talkie, went beep for Hertz Rent-A-Car. Walmart said, can you make our registers wireless? They're Ethernet. Well, I can't take a chunk of barcode data and put it in a microphone. Not Ethernet. It runs too fast, right? So we changed radios, created sped, spread spectrum. There are two people that put this to stuff together, IEEE, which is, you know, 802.11, and whatever prefix it is, suffix, mm -hmm. and the Wi-Fi Alliance. The Wi-Fi Alliance happened right about here in 1999 with 11B. It was called WECA, Wireless Ethernet Compatibility Alliance, WECA. We made the posters, we got Intel signed up, Microsoft signed up, we Aeronet, Cisco bought us in 2000, late 1999, 2000. Before that, we were putting this together and calling it WECA, Wireless Ethernet Compatibility Lines. Phil Bellinger came in one day and said, we can't call it WECA. And I'm like, what's wrong with WECA? We got the posters made up, everybody signed up. It's a church. I'm like, what do you mean a church? West Edmonton Christian Association up in Canada had WECA. So Phil Bellinger goes, let's call it Wi-Fi. I'm like, oh, hi-fi, Wi-Fi. The, the, there's no fidelity. I collect Martin guitars, play a tune. It's got fidelity, right? Speakers have fidelity. There's no fidelity. I like the name. Phil Bellinger submits the name Wi-Fi to Interbrand in New York. Interbrand is an ad agency. They make up names for Procter & Gamble. Phil Bellinger seeded them Wi-Fi a bunch with other, bunch of other names, and it came back. And he piously provided a, presided over the selection of his own darn name. And that's how we got Wi-Fi. <laughs> anyway, just a funny story. But anyway, Wi-Fi wi Alliance decided to start calling it Wi-Fi 6 because of 5G, 4G. We got to have a number two. We can't be 802 dot whatever. So then they reinvented history and walked it all the way back down to Wi-Fi 1. That's the deal there. <laughs> Takeaway is Wi-Fi Alliance does the certify. They certify products for interoperability. We're a founding member of that. It's a team of everyone now. If you look <laughs> at what's happening with it, all the Wi-Fi certification on our, on our APs are happening by the end of the year. And if you look at how this is looking today, I thought last month on the first, how many products are Wi-Fi 6 certified right now? Went to the Wi-Fi Alliance, 28 Wi-Fi phones, Wi-Fi 6 phones, only five routers or APs. Well, whose routers are those? They were only the ones in the test bed. So that was the first of, you know, last month. What about just before I came over here and left Ohio? Let's look again. There's 15 of them. This morning I looked, I think it's 16 or 17. The point is the Wi-Fi Alliance just got their test bed running and they're just pumping the APs through now. Products are getting certified right now. There's people who said, oh, we've been Wi-Fi certified for months. No, we haven't. You know, they just got it going. That's what I wanted to let you know. Looking at the timeline of these things, We've had these APs out early in April, the 15, 17, 20. We got them Wi-Fi 5 certified, not AX certified, because the test bed wasn't up. And, but we were working with Samsung and a lot of early vendors get interoperability things working. In fact, we've got some really cool stuff in software with, with Samsung where we can actually tell if you put your device in airplane mode. You can tell the OS of Samsung. All these things we're working on. But I'm talking about APs and hardware. So push me over here to now, the 9130 uh, AP. Looking at that AP, looking at the lineup you've got, these two APs, 15 and 17, those are our, you know, they're labeled, what do they call them here? You know, basically small, medium deployments. I call them Me Too APs. Basically, they're the chipset vendors <coughs> iteration of the first AXAPs, the early first to market APs. This one does OFDMA in uplink and downlink. This one only does it in downlink. There's a lot of chipsets out there today that don't do OFDMA. And what, what's OFDMA? It's a big buzzword. Orthogonal frequency division multiplex and multiple axis. Bob, <coughs> all it's saying is, is I'm sending, I can, when I send a signal out on the air, 
I sent it with multiple carriers. And OFDMA lets me put multiple users on, on carriers and get more out at the same time. Going downstream, that's great. You want to be able to do it upstream for Wi-Fi certification. So every one of these APs, with the exception of this one, will be WFA certified for Wi-Fi 6. There's a lot of APs in the field that don't do OFDMA, only in, it only does it in the downlink, because it's a chipset limitation. I tell you this just so that you know some products will never be Wi-Fi 6 certified, so just be aware of that. This is the, the flagship. If you look at this, the breakdown here, these two have unique Cisco features that no one else has. These two APs have the RF ASIC, which is a unique chip that allows us to do spectrum analysis, it allows us to do a lot of cool things, and I'll talk about them in a bit. So these two have a lot of differentiation than the, than the first two. Looking at the 9130AX, it's an 8x8 eight eight AP, which means in 5 gig I can have 8 radios hearing a client and 8 radios that can talk to a client. In the previous products in the 9120, if you go all the way back to the 2800 and 3800, when we came out with products, people said, I've got too much 2.4 coverage. What I really need is dual 5, you know, two 5 gigs. This product can do that. It can do 8x8 eight eight and 5 gig, meaning I'm 8x8, eight eight, or I can split it and create two 5 gigs in 4x4 four four mode. The prior products, when we did that, like the 9120, when you did that, when you took the 9120 and you said, this is a 9120, right out of the box, I got dipoles on, or you can have an internal antenna. Four by four AP. Default was dual five. It did five gig, I'm sorry, default was five gig and 2.4 off the four antennas. But you could plug in a port here get another antenna port and I could do dual five. I could create a five gig here and a five gig somewhere else. But if I did that, I had to turn off the two four radio because the two four radio was an XOR. I'm either five or I'm two four. 9130 is awesome. You take the eight by eight five gig and you create it as an eight by eight or two five and the two four stays active. So you've got two four running and you have dual five. So if you think about that, it breaks down like this, where default, full 8x8 mode and 2.4 mode. You're running all of that, and you've got an IoT radio in there that can be can BLE and Zigbee and all that. And you have an RF ASIC, a spectrum analysis radio, also in the AP. So you have all of that there, or you flip it into the dual 5, and it says 5 gig here, 5 gig here, 2.4 also active. Well, why would you want to do that? Why do I need... Dual five, what's wrong with just running eight by eight? Well, if you look at this AP right above your head, right in the center of the room here, that AP can do dual five, like this one can. Well, if I'm on one channel, one five gig channel, everybody connects to that AP, and everybody out there in the hallway connects to that AP. If everybody connects, um, you know, She's going to connect the fastest because she can almost touch it from where she's at, right? So I expect her to get the very fastest throughput. <clears throat> and somebody out there is going to get a slower throughput. So everybody competes. This one's going, Fred, Fred, I'm Fred, Fred. This one's going, my name is Fred. Yeah. And, and, and it's in contention <laughs> the whole time it's on the air against these guys, right? So if you look at channel utilization, I'm at 60% channel utilization with everybody running. If I break that off into dual five, my channel utilization goes down to 20% and 24%. These guys connect at their fast speed, these guys connect at their slower speed. Well, instead of 60%, I'm at 24%, I'm at 44%. What does that mean? Well, if I don't have Wi-Fi 6 clients, because remember, Wi-Fi 6 has a lot of cool things for latency and everything else. This is a poor man's better latency implementation. You know, if I can get that channel broke off, get less people on it, your acts get faster, your latency picks up, everything's good, right? So that's the purpose of Dual 5 and why it exists. You can argue that when everything's Wi-Fi 6, maybe I don't want Dual 5, maybe I just want 8x8 and just let multi-user MIMO and everything else take it up, and I don't need that. But I submit to you that 
it's great to have the flexibility for that. Also, you can do things with that that I can take that AP and I could put one antenna going one way, one going the other. If I'm a Kroger freezer, in the freezer for the tow motors, outside for the tow motors. You know, the people, you know, I can move them around, indoor, outdoor, all of that, right? I showed you a slide beginning with where I said these first two APs, the 9115 and the 15, they're the Me Too APs. They're just like everybody else. Well, let's look at that one compared to the 9130. This one's only certified for Wi-Fi 5. It doesn't do OFDMA in the upper. <clears throat> so we won't get that certified for Wi-Fi 6. There's no support in this AP for Dual 5. Dual 5 is something that we created. When we did Dual 5, the competition goes, can't be done. Can't do it. No, you know, that's stupid. Yeah, well, we did it and it worked really well, and then they had to do it, right? And others do it by putting filters in the AP and doing trick. We do it a lot better, you know, because we allow you to put it anywhere you want. But anyway, the deal is this one doesn't have external antennas. This one does. This AP is the only one, come on, clicker. Don't marry me into this thing. You blamed it on the clicker. I did. It's all right. Let's see if we still got control here. I like that better now. Anyway, if you if you look, this AP can not only do all this dual five and everything, but there's things coming in the future with this BLE and Zigbee. These two APs have a gateway in it for Zigbee and Threat. We're looking at how we want to introduce that. We have something called the Aeronet Developer Program where you can go and learn and use DevNet and everything else. Do we want to do the Zigbee gateway and open the whole thing up so anybody can develop to it? Or do we, and do we want to give you APIs? We're in the process of working all of that out. That's why the gateway portion of this AP is not scheduled till next year. But we're working on that to get that out. This is also one of the only <clears throat> APs that can come up full function with 8x8 mode, IoT radio running, USB <clears throat> port. By the way, we increased the USB port from two watts to four and a half on the USB output port. I can do all of that at AT power, 30 watts. A lot of the competition needs two wires, they can't, all that other stuff. I can even bring this AP up on AF power in a limited mode. Why would I want to do that? Well, maybe I only got 13 watts because I want to stage a bunch of APs to a certain controller or configure. So we even allow you to do that. So that's pretty cool. If you look at the back of the AP, it's got a five gig, you know, multi gigabit port, console port, reset button, very clean side of it's got a USB port on it. If you rip it open, and, I've, and I brought one with me here, this, uh, this is the inside of that AP. And what you'll see is there's an elaborate antenna system in here. When this thing is in eight by eight mode, these do two, four, and five gig. The center ones do five gig. Oh, the RF ASIC is in the middle and the BLE antennas. In the That's a lot of antennas in that AP. And it takes a lot of experience to get those antennas working so you get really good patterns and all with them. And we want performance out of that as well. And if you look at that AP, the antenna design, if you look at this little triangle antenna and this one in the center, when we originally designed the AP, when I remember I told you when you do dual five, you have a micro cell that picks up the close people and a macro that picks up people farther away. We're, we played with the antenna design on this product and you can see the heat map of a 4800. When it's in micro cell, it's pushing all that energy directly down. I didn't want to do a pattern, I wanted to do a heat ball because you can see that better, right? The energy goes directly down. And the macro cell gets pooched out and it goes out far, much farther, right? We're introducing something called a micro meso cell. And now look at this. It's really similar <coughs> in a lot of ways. What we want to do is instead of that, whenever we did micro and macro in dual five, the micro had to be the lowest power so that the macro could be the highest power. Well, do you always want a small cell and a big cell. Maybe you want two medium-sized cells. So now we've changed the antenna design so in future software ver releases, we might be able to give you a sliding window that's like, instead of a micro, make that a little fatter than a micro. Micro is you know, small, macro is big, miso is like my gut. It's kind of not small and it isn't real big, but it's there, right? It's, it's a little bit 
a little bit bigger, right? So we redesigned that antenna, and that's, that's the quick 9130 for a second. Now I want to take you down some new path here that's brand new. These antennas now are self-identifying. <coughs> so on the 9120, and I'm going to touch on that. I, I talked to 9120 back in January, February, but the E wasn't available. Now the E is. This is the external one with the RPTNC connectors. So it's got RPTNCs on the top. And it's got a dart connector on the, on the side of it. That's a lot of antennas. I mean, if you go four here and then another four out there, you, you know, if you're inside and aesthetics and all, you may want this to just be an internal, right? But you know, internals look better aesthetic-wise, but these give you more flexibility. There's something unique about the first port of this unit right here, port A. It's purple now. See, it's purple up there. All these antennas break down with little rings on them. Like if, it is, if it's got an orange dot, it's dual band, it does two, four, and five. If it's blue, it does five only. If it's now purple, it's self-identifying. So what happens is the AP boots up, as it comes up, it goes, interrogate port A, the, the purple port. Is there a self-identifying antenna plugged into the purple port? And if you've got one, you know, it'll look a lot like, you know, this one. It'll have a purple stripe on it. <coughs> Now the access point knows I've got a self-identifying antenna. Well, big whoop, why do I want that? I'll tell you why. Because when you have an internal antenna in the AP, I know the gain of it. So I can turn the power up as high as I want to the maximum power that's allowed on that gain of an antenna. If I have an external one and I have RPTNC connectors, I don't know if you're going to screw a 2 dBi antenna, a 10 dBi, I don't know what you're going to put on it. So we limit the AP to 6 dBi. Any antenna that's connected to the AP has to be 6 dBi or less. So since we know that, it has to be 6 or less. You know, we, is that an impedance mismatch problem? Or is it no, impedance, no, there are 50, 50 to 52 ohms impedance on that. It's not an impedance mismatch. It's an FCC regulation. Uh -huh. I'm a light bulb. I said you can only be 100 watts. I don't care what your 100 watts, right? Well, if you've got the ability to screw something else on there and make 110, it's wrong, right? So we limit you to 6 dBi. With a self-identifying antenna, I can say I'm 2.2, now I can turn my power back up. It's a performance <coughs> hit, you know, increase because it's self-identifying. So a 2.2 dBi dipole is crippled because the power is a little bit lower because we assume 6 dBi. Self-identifying, it moves it all up, right. makes it better. That's the root, that's the that's the so crude way of relying on the engineer to configure the antennas. Correct. It so allows, it allows the antenna, the AP, to discover what the antenna is instead of relying on the antenna. Because instead of relying on the engineer to put it in, exactly. Yeah. And this gets a whole lot better in the 9130. Yeah. This is just how we're doing it on the 9120. That's increasingly important because there's a lack of skill. Right. Sometimes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So the nice thing is we're coming out with antennas that, like the 6 dBi patch, has four antennas, and you have to screw them on the top, right? Now the, the two new pa the patches have the dart. Just one insertion, it's all connected. So that's the big deal of that. Now I want to talk about the 9130. The 9130, the E version, has no RPTNC connectors on it at all. It's got a big yellow plug. You unplug this yellow plug, and I have a new 8-port dart. This 8-port dart can plug in. Let's, let's rip it down a little bit. This 8-port dart has eight RF connections and 16 lines of digital. So now anything that plugs into this, I can talk to. Well, why do I want to do that? Well, if I plug this in, we've got a whole bunch of new antennas that are brand new that are cool. If I take an antenna like this one, this cover out of here, that is this, okay? Now, check that out. I've, I've got full eight by eight, I can break this antenna into dual five, you know, four by four. I've got an antenna right in the middle of it for, for IoT. But the other cool thing is, is there's a board here. What the hell is this board? And there's a, an LED port. That board is a double EEPROM, you know, electrical erasable read-only memory. Basically what happens is I've got an LED on this. And I can program this EEPROM and put it in this antenna. And then when I plug this antenna into that AP, 
It knows exactly the capabilities of the antenna, what it can do, and then it takes the LED that's on the AP and mimics it on the antenna. So I could basically put this in a manufacturing environment on a pole or something, put this in a locked box or weatherproof box, and I'm, I'm rocking, and if the LED is connected, I can see it right here. So this is really cool, and it's called, we're calling it Marlin. Marlin is, is a fish, obviously. The, our antenna engineer is a big fly fisherman, so we started naming every antenna we made a, a fish, you know, coho and, you know, all these different antennas. And our APs are islands, you know, like, you know, so, so like this is, this, this 9130, we called it an axle, you know, it's an axle, it's an island. But anyway, we have three brand new antennas coming out. One's a ceiling mount, one's a pole mount, one's a 6 dBi Omni. Damn, they're starting to look just like the APs. Why is that? We redesigned all of these access points using Pinaferina, the same people that make the Alpha, you know, design the Alpha Romero, to make them look as best as, you know, the very best we could make them look and make them uniform. So regardless of whether you have a 9130 or a 9120, they all look, have the same look, the same, you know, same look, feel, all of that. But here's what's cool. I'm going to tear these apart from it. The ceiling mount antenna has plenum cable on it. You can mount it. But, and that's, that's what it looks like inside, right? You know, you've got all these elements and you've got your EEPROM that self-identifies it. it. If you look at that, that, if you rip it apart, all I want to show you is look at the thickness of the AP compared to the thickness of the antenna. So what does that mean? When you put this on a ceiling, I can grab this tile, yank it down, poke a hole in it with, with a screwdriver, stick the yoke up there, it's already split for the cable, and in two seconds I can mount that antenna Anywhere I want in the tile, I don't, I'm not married to a rail. It can look better, it can, you can put, it, it, it's, it does, the picture doesn't do it justice, but it's a lot thinner on the ceiling. You can just, it's, it's, a, it's a deployment aesthetic kind of thing, you know. And it also, like, if you're, you're, if you're New York Board of Education, you're worried the kids are going to steal the AP or destroy it, you know, destroy the antenna, <laughs> throw another one on there, you know. So, so that's it. The pole mount Omni I tore apart, showed you that, you know, it's got the LED on it. This one's pretty cool. This is a 6 dBi patch that looks just like the AP with the an an antenna port. It's Cisco Live. You know, we had this rat's nest going on to be able to create dual five and everything. Now I can get rid of all of that and I have a one insertion. I can have an an two antennas <coughs> and one insertion and it's nice and clean. Even Aruba, you know, I, got, I was somewhere where they had an Aruba mount. Even they do this cabling mess, you know, and we're trying to get away from that. So. What if I told you that you can mount the antenna on a wall and slide the AP behind it? So now you've got, you've now taken an AP and made it a directional ant, you know, AP, hmm. and you've hidden the AP, and you don't have all the cabling and management problems that you would have. So, so that's a really cool thing that we're doing. We have a stadium antenna, high gain antenna, for like covering stadiums and mass, you know, where there's lots and lots of people. We've got that under development and we're going to fix it so that you can mount the AP behind that as well. And we're looking at whether we want to do it in a <clears throat> or make it weatherproof, that kind of thing. So we're working on that, that's coming. If you need to get into the antenna, there's a dart connector, you know, that, that will, you could plug in and it will give you RPTNCs. It'll actually break this out so that you can split them and send them two different ways. And uh, what's, this is just one that's not been prepped, but, mm. but I wanted you to be able to see that I've got 16 lines of digital and I've got eight RPT and C. So, so you'll be able to use legacy antennas with this product. This is the RPT and C. We're also coming out with a plug like this with end connectors for the higher gain antennas. We no longer need a P version, you know, a professional install version, because everything is self-identifying and we'll have a cable that'll allow you to do that. So the takeaway is the 9120 uses a four bang one, 9130 uses an eight, an eight port one. So if you're ordering, don't order the wrong cable. That's, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, differentiation between things. We've had a long history of designing things. Cisco, Richfield, Ohio, I like to promote me because that's where I come from. Um, we're the only business unit in Cisco that has six Pioneer Awards. S Pioneer Award is Cisco's highest award <clears throat> for engineering development and, and, and it's cool. So, so we're the only group that has six of them. 
And a lot of them were because of, you know, the spectrum analysis. And what, by the way, there's a guy that I work, you know, the, he just had a presentation on, on, uh, on Ethernet. There's a guy that sits next to me, Clark Carty. He invented multi-gigabit Ethernet. Clark Carty holds all the patents on that nonsense and helped build the N-Base T alliance. And if you talk to him, he's like, where's my Pioneer Award? I should have got a Pioneer Award for that. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> he argues that that darn thing is really being used, right? Yeah. And, but anyway, we've done all of this stuff all the way to the RFASIC. And what's cool about the RFASIC is we were tied, when we, when we did Cognio, we were using it. When we bought Cognio, we had a spectrum analysis chip, and we married it into a Marvell silicon, and we put that together. I don't want to have technology religion. I don't want to be wrapped into a, into a Marvell or a Broadcom or a Qualcomm or, you know, because all of them are different. So I, we do our special stuff, things like fast locate, meaning if I've got an AP that's, on, that's servicing clients, if I have a third radio that's out there that can listen to clients, and, and, and multiple APs have those, I can quickly find you, and where are you? I can triangulate you in, and you'll see versions with hyperlocation coming out uh, down the road. You'll see other things where we're using that RFASIC. That's one thing, Do, zero weight DFS. If I can use my monitor radio, which is this one here, to listen, and not my client serving radio, then if there's a DFS event, I already know where to go. I can move things quicker. I, you know, it's an entire another radio system. It's a software-defined radio that lets you do it. 9130, it's on the back of the AP. 9120, it's here. If it's an internal version, there's only one RF connector on it. But if you have an external version, like the 9130Es or the AXEs, there's two ports being used. Because if I send a five gig antenna this direction, I send one this direction, what if there's a DFS event? If I rely on the chipsets to do, <clears throat> and I'm gonna jump ahead of some of this stuff. You know, you know if, if I've got DFS, you know, I've gotta get off that channel. If I get a false because there's a bad client that's making noise that looks like there's a DFS event, or at the party last night, Andrew Von Nagy was talking about an airplane, old airplanes that fly over his head that, that, that simulate DFS, and, and he gets these false trips and all that. <clears throat> if you have a chipset, and you're anybody, any company, because we all use these chipsets. If you've got a Marvell, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Fredcom, whoever the hell chipset you're using, right? If you've got a chipset and it has a problem with false DFSing, you got to go with your hat in your hand and the chipset vendor, can you fix me? I got, I got customers in the field, man, they're pissed. Oh, yeah. The RFASIC looks at that and goes, is that really a DFS? I don't think so, because I can look at that thing at a really low level and I can tell you exactly what that is. Ignore Broadcom's faults. It's a false. Stay on that channel. That's huge. <laughs> I mean, if you've got an outdoor thing or something out there that's even a malformed client that's making signals that look like DFS, it can shut your network down. RFASIC, that separate radio, is a checks and balances against the against the chipset vendor. So that's really cool. And fast locate, I mentioned, if you if you basically have a spare radio, an RFASIC, that can listen. You can tell where the clients are, find them quicker. I don't want to get into too much software. I'm done with this noise. But, but I, I, the thing I want to talk to you about is the RFA stick is like bringing in topsoil. I have no idea what we're going to plant with that. That chip is incredible. But we need software engineers to build software cool things to it. You know, things like our fingerprinting or telling this radio from another. You, you know, there's so many things we can do with that chipset. <coughs> but we need time to do it. The, the point I want to make is you can't build cool software if you don't have cool hardware behind it, right? And all of these APs are made not to fail. I can take this in a Goodyear tire plant, cold Kroger freezer, if it fails. And, and that's a problem, by the way. I'm gonna leave you with one last thought. I tell my relatives who don't understand this crap <laughs> that this is a coffee cup. My coffee cup will work in a freezer, in a tire plant. I could throw this damn coffee cup on the floor, I can pick it up and it will still work. Now, change the model. It's not about the AP. It's about selling you a license agreement to use the AP. Well, if I'm gonna sell you an agreement to drink out of a cup, maybe I don't care about the cup. 
If the cup fails, I'll give you a new cup, maybe a jacket that matches, whatever you want, you know, and, and you're done. And my point is, if I'm a Goodyear tire plant in Indianapolis, Indiana, I got robots running around with tires everywhere. The thing's 35 feet in the ceiling. It's hot as hell up there. If that AP fails, I'm screwed. We do the best job with these APs. That's why they're called Catalyst. Catalyst is Cisco's top of the line. We changed it from Aeronet to Catalyst. It's not, it's not so-and-so against Aeronet. It's so-and-so against Cisco Catalyst. These things are going to work. I'm out of time, but I want to, you know, the, the point I want to make is when those things fail, I'm going to just go drown night crawlers and dripple oatmeal on my shirt, and I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you.